It's another utopian day in Utopia, which is an actual place in the hill country west of San Antonio. Kind of a small community, a lot of ranching, a lot of hunting business, a lot of retired folks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Every week, Lee Beverly well, serves a community of churchgoers. My main job is the pastor here at the Utopia Baptist Church, and that's my full-time occupation. But outside of worship, the Reverend Beverly provides another service in this community. My hobby is taxidermy. When his focus is not saving souls, it's saving skins as lasting mementos of hunting and fishing trips. It's not a calling, I don't think, but I think it's part of a gift that God has given me, an eye to see the nature of animals and, and try to take something that is lifeless and make it look lifelike, look real. I'll put a little glue on here. I know I'm not the best taxidermist in the world by a long shot, but I know I'm not the worst neither. <laughs> You know, every taxidermist is different. A look around the Beverly home shows just how much Lee has learned about the art of taxidermy. The first thing I ever mounted was a squirrel. And I used a paper towel roll and two black marbles for the eyes. Ended up about that long. <laughs> and so it's been a conversation piece. My sister still has it. I grew up, my dad was a hunter, and his dad was a hunter. Kind of a family thing. So we did it all of our life. Because I love nature, I love the outdoors. Well, let's not waste something that's been harvested, it's just preserving that beauty so we get to see it all the time. The hide, the horns, preserving the memories. Let's see where we're at. You know, I've been asked, you know, well, is that a godly thing or not to do? James 1.22. We're to be doers of the word. In Genesis chapter 2, God told man to take care of the earth. Harvesting an animal and knowing the numbers that we can harvest is part of conservation. I'm usually out here by myself and yeah, it's a good quiet time. Sometimes I'll have to stop and write down some sermon thoughts. While the Reverend's hobby seems at peace with his faith, there is one kind of taxidermy he will not touch. I've had people ask me to do a cat and, and a poodle and I said, no way. <laughs> No pets. This is a goose. These are wings for a turkey. Oh, that's my jackalope. Though the craft has evolved with creativity and available supplies. All kind of sizes. White-tailed deer. Fish eyes. Some things have not changed. Fixing to do a quail. It teaches you patience. Already skinned it out. Put the eyes in it. And then I've got wires in the legs and that'll help make him stand up. That's one of the reasons why I picked up taxidermy as a kid, to learn patience. And then I can set him in here and have him standing up now. And then it's just a matter of getting all the feathers in the right place. Preserved with care, a mount like this quail can last a lifetime. As long as they don't have a cat in the house, it still has bird scent. <laughs> and it still looks like a bird. So I tell everyone now, if you got cats at home, beware. Although most work is for clients, the Beverleys keep their own mounted memories. Whenever someone goes hunting and they harvest their animal, got a bunch in here. That's an experience that they have for the rest of their life. Some of mine and the kids. Uh, this is my son's first deer. When they take that home, put Seven it on their wall, old. every time they walk by, they look at that. So all those memories come back. Every hunt with my dad or the sons or even my daughter, uh, she's a hunter too. 
They all have some kind of a special meaning behind every one of them. So I come in here every once in a while and just look around and remember all the great memories we've had. Probably one of the biggest problems with the world today is families don't spend time together. Learning to we do a lot of things together, and because of that, we have good communication. However you may define utopia, as a place of faith or a community of friends and family, as a place where work brings joy, or maybe just a place where the sky is blue and the water runs clear. Lee Bevely seems to have found his utopia, and it's a real place in the Texas Hill Country.